Hey, this is Matt. This is the second video of my R200 diff rebuild. This time I'm going to be putting it together. Um, my bearings have come in. I'm pretty happy about that. I got them from Webster Bearings in um, Donald Park in Tasmania. Um, took two days to come in. Pretty happy. I think it was about 260 bucks. I got um, all the main bearings, new seals, um, a quick sleeve or the speedy sleeve to repair the output shaft with the where the um, seal's been rubbed and some bearing glue so that um, I can check the mesh of the gears at the end. Okay, so first up, I'm going to go in the reverse of how I started and install this bearing onto here. To make it go on a bit easier, I'm going to heat it up on this induction cooker. Um, I've cleaned up the shaft already. First, this washer goes on. It's got a bit of a tapered section in there that goes downwards towards the pin and gear. You can tell because the riding from the bearing is actually still embedded in there. 200 watts set down the bearing. And theoretically, that bearing should just drop on when it's at, at its correct temperature. But if it doesn't, I've got this piece of steam pipe I've cut to length. And I'll give it a tap down with the hammer. And if that doesn't quite bring it into place, then I'll give it a strike. Well, I'll hit it with the, hit it with the press. Okay, we're pretty close to 80 degrees now, so I'm going to turn this off, pull that away, grab the bearing, and then hope for the best. Okay, it's not going straight on there, so grab this and tap. Okay, so I'm on to plan B. A little bit of steam pipe. I'm going to try and use the press to push the bearing down. So the heat didn't seem to work for me. And we're home. That's the first bearing installed. So I've taken the old bearing races and just split them with a the grinder so I can use them to press in the new races. To help press the bearings into the, um, into the casing I took the bent, the bent shaft and just machined the end down on the lathe. So I've retrieved my bearing shelf from the freezer. I've um, cleaned and oiled the place where the cup sits in the housing. So that one actually went in really easily, happy with that, um, no trouble at all, I'll flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so that one pressed in just fine as well. Um, happy with that. Now I need to install the pinion back through and actually have to press the pinion in the housing at the same time, which is going to be a little bit more difficult. First, these pieces go on like this. This spacer is packed with grease. However, so I'm going to do pack it with fresh grease. Before I do that, I'm not sure why it was packed with grease, but it was from the factory, so I may as well put it back in there. And this washer goes on. Luckily, it's not polarized. Okay, so this next part's actually quite tricky. What I've done is I've set up a press to the gap there for the pinion spline. Um, I'm just going to sit the bearing over the top of there. Then, I'm going to sit the housing carefully over the top of everything, line it back up with the hole. 
Now we're going to put the pinion through carefully and just start it in that bearing. Now I won't be able to fully press this into place using this method but I can get it started. Okay, you can hear it creaking. That's good. Bearing's going in. Okay, it's starting to bind up now, so now, yep, it's grabbing on the casing. Now I need to space the space the other side up a bit more. Okay, so we can see the bearing's partially pressed on. The problem is there's a gap here, so I need to put a spacer there to continue pressing. And there we are. Installed, no play. Not winding up. Okay, so this is a pretty important step. There's heaps of Loctite in the threads of the um, ring gear here. I um, chipped it out with a center punch and, and a hammer. You see there's just absolutely tons of it. Also, it's in the threads and the threads of the bolts need to thread in nicely so I can um, get the torque right. I couldn't get another bolt easily because it's an M13 by one so I've got this um, my bottle brush from Bunnings and that seems to do the job really well. So now all the threads are fully clean all the way down to the bottom so that they don't throw the torque reading off when I go to um, tension them down. Also I found a mark here, a bit of a high spot where someone has dropped this in the past. What I did was I got a sharpening stone and lapped that down flat so it doesn't throw the, doesn't throw the ring gear out and it gets the, um, the teeth engagement at that point. Okay, so I've got the ring gear on now. I'm going to try and put the bearings back on of this diff center. So I'm going to heat these bearings up on the induction stove again. Um, hopefully they'll drop on, otherwise I've cut one of the old bearings up. So I can use that to tap on or use the press if it comes to it. Okay, so the bearings have hit 80 degrees. Theoretically, should slide straight on. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but we'll see. Okay, so it didn't slide straight on. Try tapping the bearing into place. Still not moving very well. It's onto the press again, as expected. Um, they were moving a bit when I was tapping them, but seriously, it's just easier to use this. Um, glad I did buy it, because otherwise I'd be stuffing around with hammers and probably worn something. There it is, easy. So I haven't even bothered trying to heat this side up, I'm just going to push the bearing straight on. And of course it goes straight on there, no problems whatsoever. And there we have it, if you're going to be changing bearings in one of these diffs, I wouldn't recommend even bothering trying to heat them up, just do it all on the press because the heating really doesn't have any effect. Okay, next I'm going to try and put it all back together. Paid attention to where all the parts came from and put them back in the same place. Going to tension the bearing caps to about 90 foot pounds and then I'll hopefully go to check it and see if everything's right. Right, so I had a lot of trouble getting this centre back in, especially the shims. What did work in the end was just sliding the whole assembly in with all the shims in place, tapping it with a nylon hammer to work it in, and then pulling the rest in with the caps. It doesn't feel like it's binding, so I guess that's okay. Um, next, I think we've got to put some grease 
on here, check to see if the engagement's right and also check the lash with the dial indicator. So I've coated um, both sides of some of the teeth with bearing blue grease. Um, I'm going to turn the pinion, let it go through that backwards and forwards and then see what the grease looks like. Right now I really don't know what I'm looking at here, I'll admit that, but the grease that's moved around seems to be centralised on the old wear points that are already on the diff. It looks to me like they're a little bit out, further out than they should be, but it's not like it's right at the end or anything, so I think that's with intolerance. I mean, that's where the wear was before and it was running, so it must be okay. Um, on the other side of the teeth, it's a bit hard to see, sort of the same story. It sort of covers most of the most of the old wear mark, so. So I've locked the input shaft and therefore the pinion. I've set up dial indicator on the ring gear. Now I'm going to try and measure the backlash by moving the assembly backwards and forwards. Like so. And we're seeing approximately point 0 0.4 of a millimetre of backlash, which is nowhere near enough. It's supposed to be between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 millimetres, so I'm a fair way off. So unfortunately, I've got to pull it all back apart. Okay, so it turned out to be a false alarm. I hadn't tightened this nut on the pinion, and that hadn't pulled the pinion right back all the way away from the ring gear. I've done that now, and um, I'm now seeing... That's well, moving a bit for me, but I'm now seeing 0.1 of a millimetre, which is at the lower end of the range, so that's going to be okay. So I'm pretty sure I'm safe to put it back together. Okay, now I'm pretty happy with how everything's gone together in this. The next step is to put the seals in. I didn't put the seal in for the pinion sort of coupling here, so I have to pull that off and put that in. I also need to install a um, shaft repair kit on, on here. Um, I don't need to do that for the side shafts because the seals I've got are actually 10mm ones rather than 11 that it would normally have, so the lips are going to sit in a slightly different spot, avoiding the need for that repair. To push them in, I'm just going to use the um, pieces of bearing that I cut up. Okay, so I'm going to install the rear seal. I'm just going to set it into place then use some various pieces of bearing that I pulled apart earlier and the hammer to lightly tap it into place. And that's it, that one's in place. Next I need to install the shaft repair kit on this shaft. You can see the two grooves in the shaft that have been caused by the seal rubbing and probably contamination in the oil over time. So if I don't put a repair kit on there it'll leak. So I definitely need to fix that. Okay, so this is the shaft repair sleeve. Um, comes with a couple of parts, some instructions, and the installation tool, and the sleeve itself. The sleeve just slides on to repair or cover those grooves in the shaft. It um, is so thin that I don't actually need to install an oversized seal, which is really handy. Um, first step, I need to apply some non-setting sealant to the inside of the inside of the sleeve. This is just some mastic. So I'll apply that as it says in the instructions. Then it's simply a matter of tapping it gently into place using the tool that's provided. And there we have it. It's repaired and it won't leak anymore. Next I've got to install the side seals. It's actually possible to push these tooth up too far through. So it's important to use a tool that will actually stop at the lip that's there and still press on the on the seal. So that particular piece is going to work quite well. So again, I'll just sit it in place. 
feels like I can push it in by hand, but I'll tap it anyway. Grab my tool. And here, that's home. In. Easy as that. Now let's flip it over and do the other side. Next, I'm just going to run a bead of um, grey RTV silicon around the casing. I've cleaned it up already with brake cleaner. Um, I could have made a gasket or bought one, but this, this works pretty good. So the silicon's set. I just need to torque down the bolts and then install these half shafts and then I'm done. Finally done. One rebuilt R200 diff. This did turn into a way bigger job than I was expecting but I'm pretty happy that I did it because it wouldn't have been much fun to have the, bear the bearings fall to bits and, and ruin the diff later on. Um, I had to buy a lot of gear, but I kind of wanted to press anyway, so, so that's all good. Um, if you like the videos, please like and subscribe so I keep making more of them. Cheers.